Mary is standing by in Burlington, Ontario, and has sent us an email. The subject is Stanley Black and Decker. Please give us your opinion for the long term. Sure. So uh, the the home building sector and the home building materials sector, you know, went through some uh, correction over the last few months, and so basically everything in that group pulled back. I think that there are some people who had concerns that the cycle was slowing down. We're not believers in that in that thesis. However, uh, in the last week or so, the home building group has made a turn. The materials group looks like it's making a turn. Uh, Stanley Black and Decker, I wouldn't say as a leader in the group, uh, but it can benefit a couple of ways. Obviously, if the home building group gets a little bit better, which it seems to be it seems to be improving, uh, that's a positive. Uh, the consumer side is getting a little better. Uh, and if the pro side starts to improve and the industrial side starts to improve, then that can participate. At this point, I would love to see the stock through kind of $145 before I would be a buyer. That would reset the stock technically. Uh, so I like the group. I think technically the stock has underperformed the group and it's not really a leader in the group. If you want participation in this group, I would probably look more to a Home Depot and get a broader basket of exposure. Uh, it's held up better and it technically looks much, much better. I considered using it as a top pick today. Oh, okay, Home Depot HD would be uh, his choice. Colin in Sarnia, Ontario, go ahead. Yes, uh, good uh, afternoon, gentlemen. Thank you for taking my call. Um, David, you got me curious a couple of months ago when you said in your narrative that you study hundreds of charts a day, and I love looking at charts and try to get a feel for them. I'm just wondering if you could help us understand maybe what you look for in them. I know you've talked about pivot points in the past, but I'm wondering if there's anything else you, you look for when you're scanning charts. Sure. And is, is there a chart, a stock chart, or an index chart we can show to help you illustrate, David? Uh, well, you could, I mean, listen, you could pull up a chart of Amazon. You oh, okay, know. five I mean, year or one uh, year? Sure, just a one year okay. is fine. Okay, okay. You know, I, I think, I think for the reason I look at so many charts is because a chart tells a story about a single security. It tells you what is happening. The market is a machine. There's a thousand moving parts, and ultimately, the sum total of all those moving parts get out there into the marketplace, and people make their decisions, and the market decides whether they like the stock or not. So I, first of all, will never make a decision that goes against what the market is telling me, because the market gets it right sooner or later. It's not for me to say I'm smarter, right? So I want to make sure that my fundamental thesis is backed up by what price is doing, mm -hmm. does it confirm or deny? Okay, that's the first thing. However, a single chart on a single security means one thing. If you can assimilate pictures on a lot of different types of securities, not just stocks, but other asset classes, ultimately it creates a quilt that helps you to understand where money is coming from and where money is going to, and you see themes emerge. So I'm a big believer in investing in leadership themes, things that are being revalued. So right now, we're in a world where reflationary assets are leading the day, things that benefit from rising rates and rising inflation. On the other side, the things that get hurt by that. Now that's me coming to that point through what's happening at sector levels, what's happening in individual securities, and a whole quilt of securities. If I'm looking at an individual security, the most important question is, you know, is, is the trend up and to the right or is it down and to the left? And you can look at things like 150 day moving average mm -hmm. on a single security, which is a really great length of time, smooth moving average of the last 150 days. I would never trade against that. If the moving average is moving higher, I'm never going to be a, a short seller and I'm never going to be a buyer of a security where the 150-day moving average is moving lower. That's a very simple thing to do, uh, but it's a rule you should always follow. I use point-and-figure price charts, which were invented by Charles Dow in the early 1900s, and they organize buyers and sellers, and you can see, is it in higher highs and higher lows? That's positive. Lower lows and lower highs, that's negative. That sounds simple, but if you follow those two rules, you know, those are things that will keep you out of trouble. The last thing I would say is that if you were looking at a stock chart or a security, you don't ever want to buy something that's extended way above its long-term moving average. Uh, just like you wouldn't want to be a seller of something extended way below its 
long-term moving average because things get ex extended one way or the other and it may look great but you're just paying way too much. So those are some simple things that I would look at. Okay, some guidelines there. David Burrows is our guest on Market Call today, uh, Chief Investment Strategist at Barometer Capital Management. North American large caps are the topic. 1-855-326-6266.